Thank you, man. It would help if I uh, put my mic. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Divisal, Mark Milo, how are y'all doing tonight? Hope all is well on this Monday. Hope you're getting your week started out well. Get some good uh, laving or studying or whatever the case may be. I'm a whole. No I'm holding up well, man. I have uh, really enjoying IPv6, kind of flying through it, which is good. It just means that uh, coming up soon is uh, thank you, Divisal. Coming up soon is some really tough stuff. We got some uh, uh, QoS, I think, is queued up after IPv6. So, been doing well. I actually catch everybody up on the labs where I'm at. So today, well, yesterday, if you were in the stream, you know, I went over the uh, traffic filtering. And I encountered an issue which was kept me from finishing the lab. I did finish it, though, this morning. And it had to do with the, yeah, IPv6 filtering. You know, we did some redistribution. We did some uh, filtering <clears throat> yesterday. And I was having trouble a lot, you know, at the end of the access list, of course, there is a deny all. And I was trying to figure out how to allow OSPF v3. And it just wasn't working. So what I was doing, I, f I figured it out a little later. I don't have a, the full answer, but what I was doing is, let me open VS Code, actually. Is in my IPv6 access list, I already have VS Code open, what am I doing? Yeah. So, for example, um, okay, I told to open VS Code, and it's uh, taking a sweet time here, okay. So what I did is, at the end of the access list, you know, I did a, let's see, permit IPv6, any, any, well, any, and then the destination was FFO2, colon, colon, 2, or no, 5. And I did the same for 6. And that was getting one way. So I had router 1, for example, at router 5 over the DMVPN link. And router five was point to multipoint. Router one was point to point, you know, DMVPN. So what would happen is an OSPF point to multipoint, router five was sending hellos to FFO2 colon colon five. And router one was getting them. Um, but router one was trying to send hellos, I guess because it's point to point, it was sending it to the link local address. So sending it to like FE80 colon colon five. Which the thing is, you can't really specify a protocol here. Like in IPv6, the protocol for OSPF v3 is protocol 89, but there's no port per se, right? You can't say TCP port this, IP port that. You don't have those options for IPv6 uh, access list. Well, you do, but you can't fit in there that I have found anyway. You cannot um, say OSPF, you know, IP, uh, IPv6 port 89. So what I had to do is just open it up for everything to FE80 colon colon uh, Five, which is router five's, you know, directly connected link. And then it worked. Um, the lab had rip running, which was interesting. Mentors. Hey, what's up, buddy? Always love some BGP. Yeah, man. Uh, doing good, my friend. Hope you're doing okay. Um, weather's great here in Florida, of course. And yeah, BGP is, uh, love some BGP, always. Actually looking forward to this uh, little BGP lab here. So yeah, I, and you know, I researched all over the place. It is getting warm again, thank goodness. I researched all over and I could not find a way to explicitly permit in IPv6. Um, IPv6 protocol OSPF. Could not, you know, or even a number. 
Now there is an option on the um, traffic filter, well, on the access list where you can say um, routing header. I don't fully understand that. I think that has to do with the fact that, you know, this first packet may contain uh, just headers. You know, you can have quite a few headers in your IPv6 packet. And you can indicate to the access control list and to the router that you have some additional packets with the remaining headers and payload. Um, and that is a way to allow that. But I couldn't find a way to explicitly allow just OSPF traffic. Um, of course, the lab had router 1 and router 5 peered via RIP in G. And that's easy because you say UDP 521. No problem. OSPF, different story. You had your IP, different story. And I searched the net, didn't find a particular way how to do that, but that's okay. Um, I'm past that. Um, I fulfilled the requirements of that lab. So now we're new, moving on to uh, IPv6 multi-protocol BGP. And these requirements, by the way, standard disclaimer, this is from the INE workbook, which I don't show on screen, but you can purchase yourself. There's a link below. Um, so I'm just streaming my journey here. Not uh, These labs are not mine. Um, but yeah, the, the basic requirements here are that you configure router one and router five as uh, eBGP peers, here are the AS numbers. Use the DMVPN cloud interfaces. And then on router one, we're gonna create some new loopbacks, advertise them in the BGP, and we we'll wanna send a summary route to router five. That's gonna be interesting. Oh, let me check on the music here, maybe we can. I don't know if you all can hear that or not, but. This is like the groovy music. Let's do some more, um, one more beat there. All right, so uh, this is what we're gonna do now. Lower that a little bit. Uh, I vote for some metallic and it does not violate the terms of service. So I'll, yeah, I wish, man. A little funk to lab too. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, Metallica is like all-time favorite band of all time. So this should be pretty simple. I say that. Um, the next lab after this is... Ooh, PIM and MLD. That should be interesting. I did go ahead and pull up the Cisco um, configuration guide. There is one for IP routing BGP configuration and multi-protocol BGP extensions. Uh, as I was just reading here, one thing to keep in mind is this. Um, you do want to disable BGP default IP4 unicast. That is a default when you add the neighbor. And these neighbors will be running IPv4, so... Uh, but then we just configure the neighbor mode AS. Address. Pretty simple stuff. The thing that's going to be interesting is we're, we're creating an aggregate address for a summary. So that's I've never done that before. This should be interesting. Uh, register your prefixes. Register your BGP. Yeah. Advertising route, IPv4 routes between IPv6 peers. Yeah, we're not going to, won't be doing that as part of this lab, but, but yeah, here we go. Let's do it. Slayer Law, Law, just for saying that it's your favorite group, you're getting another like on your YouTube videos from me. Awesome. Thank you, Mark Milo. Appreciate it. <laughs> I can always use the likes. We're almost at, I mean, we are approaching, I think, 900 subs on YouTube. So, that's pretty cool. All right, we've already got up the, I've already have the, I already have the lab running here, folks. I've got Azure. 
VM running. Uh, just router one and five. And I'm gonna put the requirements down here. It does have a new loop back, so I'm supposed to use. So let's see if we can bang this out here, get a nice couple of PCAPs out of it. Would be good. Uh, let's see, router, BGP. Oh, let me check the interfaces first. Okay, good. We've already got interfaces up and running. And the tunnel interface has this. So that's the tunnel interface, router one. Oh, uh, we got clipboard madness here already. G community edition. The clipboard madness has begun. All right, so we're just gonna say interface T zero. No. Router BGP 100. And we're gonna say no IPv4. Uh, what is the command? Let's go down to our examples down here. No BGP default. Uh, do show IPv6 protocol. So I want to make sure that it's running. It is. Okay. Uh, BGP router ID. Now this is true. We do have to do a um, IPv4 address for the router ID, which is the same as EIGRP and OSPF. Mentors, three more days till Valentine's Day. Boys, don't forget, ended up in the doghouse. My PSA for today. Thank you, mentors. Actually, before the stream, was sort of plotting my strategy. Um, we won't be able to go out, but nevertheless, I do have some plans. So, yes, good call out, my friend. Good call out. <laughs> BGP router ID. We're going to do, uh, we'll use the loop back here. And what else? Neighbor, yep. Uh, neighbor is going to be 2000, uh, what is it? 2001, 155, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Moat AS is 500. Easy enough. And then, uh, yeah. Address, family, IPv6 unicast, neighbor 2001, 5112345, activate. And before we do anything fancy with the Lubax, let's just get our, uh, get our peering running. Router, VG, let's check our interfaces. Do show IPv6 interface brief. Exclude, unassigned, down, and a solicited node. Okay, they appear up. Or did ladies like some network gear as well? <laughs> Mine does not. Some ladies do. Mine does not, unfortunately. That would be cool. Um, let's see. It's funny. Mine's not a huge fan of, uh, flowers, believe it or not, but really likes, a uh, card. Loves the cards. Especially if they're funny, man. She just cherishes those, so. That'll be important. <laughs> Router, BGP, 500. Uh, no BGP, uh, what is the command? No BGP default. And then um, router ID 150.105.5. BGP router ID. I always find it interesting how these commands are structured sometimes with BGP. Don't make a lot of sense to me. Like, I'm in the BGP. I'm in BGP. I guess I could have multiple router IDs. I don't know. Why would I put BGP in front of router ID? I'm in BGP configuration mode, but anyway. 
you just got to memorize it. Doesn't mean it has to make sense, right? Um, all right, Beach Router ID. We also want to do the uh, neighbor and then activate under the address family IPv6 unit cast. So neighbor here is going to be um, 2001, 151, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a remote AS100. Oh, did I use the wrong one? Oh, can I configure the local system? Oh, yeah, it would help to use the right IP. There we go. Uh, address family IPv6 unicast. Neighbor 2001. You got to be fast with that colon. Shift, uh, shift key colon, you know, unlike the dot, you don't have to use shift when doing IPv4. With IPv6, you got to be quick with that colon. Sometimes I mess that up. All right, neighbor, uh, remote will activate. All right, we should get a pairing here. There it is. All right, so we're not really exchanging any routes yet. Um, as you can see, we have peering show uh, BGP IPv6 uni sum. Oh, I did four. Oops. This is where it pays off if you've been doing show BGP. IPv4 uni versus show IPBGP. Uh, looking at my uni where you picked up your pace land since the last stream I viewed. High speed, low drag. Hoorah. Yeah, man. IPv6 has gone quick. It's weird. When I hit, you know, I started after passing the written. I hit multicast and I went really slow at the beginning. Like I had to really dig in to sort of understand the concepts. And then it started picking up. And when I hit IPv6... Maybe I just, since I really enjoy IPv6, uh, I've been just flying through it. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to QoS. Mark Milo, some of these commands and frequency are used certainly help us work on developing and maintaining our carpal tunnel issue. Yes. <laughs> Especially the colon, colon, colon. Um, but yeah, so I have been doing show BGP IPv4 unicast for quite a while now. Just because someone said that, you know, once you start working with one multicast and once you start working with IPv6, it's going to be easier to transition this command. So this is where this pays off, right? Show BGP instead of show IP BGP. Um, so, so I've been trying to do that. And it's already helping. Uh, messages sent, 6-6. Six, six, Two minutes, two seconds, no prefixes. All right, we're going to send some prefixes over. In a router one, we're gonna create some new interfaces. Uh, interface L1, I've six address, 2003-101, IPv6 enable, we'll do that as well. Um, I wonder if I add the IPv6 address, and don't use IPv6 enable. Well, does that automatically enable IPv6 and create the link local? I don't know. We'll try it on interface L11. So I do, do show IPv6 interface L1. Um, global unicast, it does, it does create a link local. Of course, I enabled that, that's why. Let's try interface L11. Six address thousand three one zero eleven it does okay that essentially enables IPv6 which I thought it did so it does okay so now what we want to do is 
send the optimal summary route to router five. What is the optimal summary route? Let's figure that out. Uh, we're gonna have to look at this fourth um, hextet here. Mark Mila says the problem I found is that the lower exams in ANMP don't use the address family commands IP4 implementation. If you don't keep that in mind, it may throw you for a loop on those NA and MP exams. Yes, I can imagine. It's been a while since I've taken mine. Um, okay, so we've got these loopbacks. We want to advertise them into BGP so that they're reachable. So uh, we need to figure out what is the best summary address. So we're going to take that fourth hextet. Um, so we're just going to go hexadecimal on a binary here. And we're going to say um, obviously that is easy. One, two, three, um, eight. And 10 and 11. So this is going to have to be split here. So this will be a slash 60. So our summary just will be 2003100 slash 60. And Now, I think what we have to do is we have to actually advertise. Let's see. Um, are we in route? No. Router BGP 500? 100. Um, aggregate. No. Let's see. IP address. Aggregate address um, 2003 zero. Oh no, sorry, 2003 one zero colon zero colon colon slash 60. Filter more specific routes. Okay. Uh, by default, it will not do that. What is it? What are the requirements here? Uh, let me check that again. Yeah, it sure it receives only the most optimal route. All right, let's see if uh, router five receives it. Show. BGP, IPv6, Uni, does not. I think we have to actually um, include these in our network statement before we can aggregate them and summarize them and exclude them. So we're going to do that. Um, so router, BGP, 100, network. Let's see, I probably have to do this under address family. Yeah, network is going to be um, 11 now we should be receiving them okay we have one prefix now and there it is and I think that's it folks I really do oh wait a second wait a second it's a little sneaky here it says that this is a 64 
and that this is a slash 61. Uh, it doesn't really change our summary address. Yeah, it doesn't really change it, so. Um, yeah, that should still be. I'm going to check now the workbook answer. This is 59. Let me see that here, 2001. All right, I'm gonna review that um, off stream, but I was off by two decimal points. I wonder why that, oh, I think I know. I think I know. All right, let's fix this. So first, um, interface L11. Need to head out to get some studies time in on my own before work. Wish you all had a good and thanks for streaming. Hey, you're welcome, Mark Milo, and have a great evening. And uh, good luck, my friend. Thanks for stopping in. Okay, we're gonna do uh, do show IPv6 interface L11. No IPv6 address, 1003.1011. I found that you have to use like the, it's, it's pretty particular. All right, this should be a Wait a second, I had it at 61. I did have it at 61. Okay, so that was already correct. Um, I think what I did wrong here is 11 is in hex. I didn't do my conversion. So this is actually 17. So that's where I went wrong there. So 17 is going to be 16. Yep, that's where I went wrong. So it would be... What do you, um, so 63, 2, 1, 60, 59. Yep, that makes sense. All right, I recognize my error. So we're going to go back here and change the... Show run section BGP. Okay, yeah. Couple of errors here. Uh, router BGP 100. Address family IPv6. No network, 1003.1.0.11. Network that was a three one zero eleven sixty one. Oh, incorrect network or mask prefix length configured. Well, this is the address. Oh, you know what? I'm not even gonna look, I think I know. Let me look back at the requirements though. Yeah, okay, I was right in my head. So what we have to do is we have to convert this to the network address, the network or slash 61. And in this case, a 61 is gonna make this uh, 10. So. Yep, makes sense. Okay, that's good exercise. So then, um, 
Did I already scroll off the screen? No, no aggregate address. There's going to be aggregate address 1003, 9 summary only. And show BGP at PV6 uni. Oh yeah, all done. Uh, let's do a couple PCAPs here. Off of, we'll go router five. Get some more specimens. And what I'm going to do is, excuse me, I'm going to do a clear. Um, star in. Okay, we got to keep alive. We got a keep alive. Should be a route refresh message. Message. Uh, TCP 179. So that's our connection. And I want to see an update. So actually, let's do this. Let's create, let's change it. So router BGP 100, address family PV6 unicast, and we'll do the no aggregate. So we should have a withdraw. There's update, which should include the withdraw. Now we should have two routes. We do. And then we'll go to put the aggregate back on. Pretty simple stuff, but fun. Very fun. And we have it. I did not see it come across. There it is. All right. All right. So we're going to mark this. We'll mark our regular old hello and save this bad boy. This will be our little uh, lab specimen. EGP IPv6. Nice. Close our little spammy windows. Um, are you using Logitech K120 keyboard to practice your labs for the CCI lab exam? Just curious, mentors. Uh, good question. So not on the Mac, but next to me over here, I have a desk that like goes like around. And what I do in the mornings... And during the day, during my day job, um, is I you I do have a keyboard here that I use. So um, and it's not easy to do. I'm you know I'm still kind of getting used to it because I just switched it back to it after I saw. I bought it a while back, but I just switched back to it after I saw Tony E's message. And what I'll do is. Like during the, uh, in the morning, what I typically do, like early in the morning after my workout, is I'll run Even G Pro on the Mac. And then I will lab on a Windows laptop using Putty, the Logitech keyboard, and it has two monitors. So, yeah. Right now, because um, I really don't have. I can stream on the Windows computer, but I don't know. I just don't. 
this this computer the Mac does so much better on streaming and the camera and everything else so okay so looking at the key all right so that's cool that pretty much takes care of that lab we may not have time to finish this other one but I'm at least going to kind of set it up maybe we'll do it let's see that wasn't too bad actually Got it. You got to watch those prefixes and doing the conversion. That's one thing I'm kind of making note to self. Remember to convert, um, you know, hex to decimal, then to binary. Uh, when doing when doing subnetting. Okay, so for this lab, we need to load OSPF v3 basic, which that's fine. I already have that. So let's uh, stop all nodes, wipe all nodes, close the lab, and then multicast. Oh, no, we want to go back to, I have this lab here, OSPF E3 basic. Let's do it. And the requirements are, Um, enable IPv6 multicast on R3, R5, and R7. And then R3 will join multicast group FFO87 on its VLAN 137, no, VLAN 37 interface. R3 should only accept MLD reports for the group. So far, I'm feeling good until I got to that one. Um, send general queries every 10 seconds. Okay, I think I can handle up until this. This is probably a little more complex, but let's uh, kick these guys off. Router three, uh, router five, and router seven. Now, router three, five, and seven, uh, between three and five, hmm, does that want to go over DMVPN? It doesn't really say. We don't have to use a DMVPN. Uh, between three and seven should be pretty simple. Uh, there is a guide on this. I know there is. I do, I, I do, and I may do that later, is I may come back and look at this. I, I need to read through these materials, really. Um, let's go to, there is a guide on PIM. Why are there two links here? I don't get it. Here we go. Just as we had it for IPv4, there's a basic config guide for IPv6. Uh, this should have some cool PCAPs on here. Yeah. I don't want to go too fast on this lab because I want to do some supported reading. And they have some of the most unusual examples in here sometimes.
Okay, yeah, we're probably not gonna get this done. Uh, we got a link here. This guy's subnetting tutorial really helped me speed up my subnetting skills. Just wanted to share for newcomers and salty dogs as well. Appreciate that, mentors. Thanks for that link, bud. Subnetting speed is important, man. It needs to be like second nature. Uh, we'll at least, I think what we'll do here is we'll at least get multicast running on like between router three and seven. So there you go, we've turned it on. Ton of one. So IPv6 multicast routing. Um, then we want to variation examples. Finger of BSR. Very sparse on its. Um, So it created this tunnel interface. Um, show. Interesting. Uh, PIM register tunnel for embedded RP. Now, I did not really state what uh, protocol we were going to use here. Maybe PIM is default. Embedded RP tunnel source. Hmm. No entries found. Okay, Re that's reasonable enough. Um, interesting. Enables on all IPv6, okay. Um, I would think in this case, okay, so here we have, this is more what I was looking for. We have IPv6 multicast PIM sparse mode Static multicast routing, PIM source specific multicast, source specific multicast mapping. Okay, cool. Explicit tracking of receivers. Nice. Um, what I don't see here is dense mode, which maybe it does not. Interesting. It must not support because it created, um, well, let's just see. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, there is no um, sparse mode, dense mode. So it must be sparse by default. That probably means that we need to define our. Uh, you know what? Let's do a let's do a uh, BSR. Why not? I don't see auto RP on here. Yeah. Well, let's go back to our document. Static multicast routing. Yeah, let's check this out. Oh, that's just creating an IPv6 M route. That's fine. Um,
PMSM is used in a multicast when relative future devices are involved in each multicast and these devices do not afford mode for a group. The, the root node of a tree is the RP in the case of a shared tree. The first top device is directly connected. Huh. Wow, so there's no... Yeah, this is going to require some uh, reading. It actually looks like less um, configuration. Oh, here it is. A uh, user might not want to say one embedded RP support. I noticed that term embedded. So that's really our our mode, our multicast mode, is embedded. Uh, show IPv6 multicast. Oh, that doesn't work. They are not elected, okay. And it is off for those interfaces. Tunnel. It is off. Oh, yeah. List pin tunnel interfaces. Okay. Embedded RP tunnel. Wow. Interesting. All right. So let's say we do a join here. Um, we're going to have router three. Well, let's make, well, let's, we enable on router seven, I believe. Yes. So by default, you enable it and it, it, uh, all IPv6 enabled interfaces begin to participate in multicast using PIM RP embedded mode, apparently. Interface chat 0137, uh, IPv6, MLD, join group, FFO8, colon, colon, 7, 128. So switch to include mode using given address. All right. Outgoing interface, uh, chat 0137. That really annoys me. I don't know. Okay, so. Looks like I have some reading to do, folks. Some research before I can do this lab. Uh, I don't want to just wing it. I want to really understand it. Uh, the differences between uh, six and four. So I think we'll probably end the stream here and get my reading on. Don't want to bore you with that. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in tonight, folks. We had a great BGP lab, nevertheless. By the way, I always put these PCAPs. If you want to take a look at, at them yourself, um, I upload those to the GitHub and to the packet captures. And this one's going to go right in there. I have really added quite a few lately. We have added, um, this morning I added OSPF v3, EIGR pv6, RIP ng, IPv6 neighbor discovery, of course all the bunch is a multicast. So this is always available if you want to check them out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them up there.
Uh, good stuff, man. Have a great night and keep on great. You do the same, mentors. Thanks so much for stopping in, bud. Yep, so I have pushed those up to the repo. And uh, this is fun. I love this stuff. It's like, you know, you already know the protocol for the most part for IPv4. It's like it's going a little deeper, a little more advanced. Um, hey, Casadix, you're very welcome, my friend. Casadix were able to point him to. I actually, the, the place I saw that, Casadix, he was trying to get a terminal to run. I need to run it on my machine. I haven't done that. I always use... Um, uh, I always log in normally to HTML5 console mode, but I would like to play around with the terminal mode. Um, so we had an interaction today about the, on Discord about how to do that. And I remember seeing something in the cookbook. So even though the EVNG cookbook, I mean, it's like, it's big. Like it's uh, very detailed and well-written. Um, it is for EVNG Pro for the most part, but generally... Most of the things in there work for even G Community Edition too. So I looked in there first and I saw it and I'm like, okay. And, and then I found the link. Um, because right now, yeah, when I do terminal, it does the same error you were getting, Cassadix. But uh, I'm glad that worked. Uh, I'm glad you tried it. Now I, I got to try it. Uh, thanks for tuning in, folks. Yep, works great. Makes the script it's open all in tabs. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, when you do that, you can uh, manipulate. Uh, you do some scripting and things. By the way, this is a really good read, folks. Um, everybody's talking about they want to get a cloud certification. And we have a small team. We have a cloud team. Uh, well, cloud, like, not the only cloud team, but we are a, uh, you know, an infrastructure-related team that I'm on at work. And... You know, we've had some people uh, depart one reason or another and hire new people. And it's interesting about these certifications. Is there a glut of cloud certifications? You know, everyone is saying we need to hire people for cloud work, but you have a glut. Well, a lot of people out there with certifications that are still looking for jobs. Why is that? There's a very interesting take on that. So uh, I don't. You know, there's a lot of articles that have a lot of fluff, but this is a really well-written one. So I got it from Packet Pushers Link Propagation that I'd share it here. But check it out, folks. Have a great Monday night. It's the beginning of the week. Let's get her done. Let's, uh, you know, send everybody some good bits so that we can uh, encourage each other to um, get some good work done this week here in February. And we shall see you all tomorrow night. All goes well here on the Land Tamer stream. See you then. I want to see if there's anybody to host. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's no one streaming right now to host, but uh, we shall see you all tomorrow. Thanks so much for stopping by.